The most difficult part about getting into the competitive side of Smash is definitely understanding the characters. All 89 characters have totally different moves, unique mechanics, and interesting playstyles. This makes for an extremely stressful environment for new players to the competitive scene, and the same can be said for veteran players as well. This video will introduce and explain all the first 12 characters in the Smash Bros. series for their versions in Smash Bros. Ultimate. As per recommendation for my last monthly update, this will be this month's video. Before we begin, please go take a look at my most recent community tab post to ask questions for an AMA, which will take place next month. Thanks. Mario was the first character introduced to Smash, but was not in fact the first character on the Smash roster to be created outside the series. Mario's first appearance was in Donkey Kong in 1981, but became the star of his own series in Super Mario Bros, which has now become the most popular video game franchise of all time. This platformer series, which later expanded into 3D, shows off Mario's simple moveset of jumping on enemies and using power-ups to assist him to traverse the world and save Princess Peach from Bowser. As for his attributes in Smash, he's exactly average in weight, not being light or heavy. This aligns with his character, as he is a typical all-around character who has a little bit of everything in his kit. As a character that almost everyone playing the game will know, the development team made him pretty easy for beginners to pick up and play. Nicknamed the Jumpman, Mario excels in the air, and that can be seen with his quick airspeed and large jump height. Now for explaining Mario's moveset, we'll begin with his normals, specifically his jab. Mario begins with an extremely quick punch-punch-kick combo. As compared to other characters in the cast, Mario is a pretty simple character as seen in his jab animation compared to some of the other characters' animations for their jab, but that does not mean he is not flashy or stylish. Mario's dash attack has him sliding along the ground and hitting the opponent. Since Mario slides and gets close to the ground, he is able to duck under some attacks and punish with his own move. His tilts are where he gets most of his combo starting ability that he is so known for. Four tilt involves Mario kicking straight out in front of him, which can be used as a get off me option. His down tilt is a sweep of the legs, which is used to pop opponents up and start combos as well. This move has little knockback at medium and high percents, and can be set up into a bunch of other moves for Mario. To round out the tilts, Mario's up tilt has Mario punching upwards and spinning as if hitting a block. It is a good move to keep opponents in the air, and gives Mario a nice vertical combo start to match his horizontal down tilt combo starter. Mario's smash attacks are all powerful, and that begins with his up smash, which Mario does an invincible headbutt to smack the opponent into the top blast zone. This is a great killing option from Mario's shield. Next, his F smash actually has an interesting aspect to it. Alongside the strong fireball, Mario steps back and is able to avoid attacks while charging in the move. To show off his dancing abilities, Mario next uses a break dance for his down smash. This move sends at a brutal angle, for the next subsection of attacks, it is Mario's most important part of his moveset, his aerials. In the order of least to most important, there's Mario's down air, which is his only multi-hit move other than his up B. His forward air is next, but it is Mario's most stylish move. He swings his fist down, punching anyone in its way to the blast zone, where if the spike is connected, it can help end some sick combos. On the other hand, Mario's neutral air is used in combos, to which he kicks out his legs and it can be used with either the strong or weak hit. Second in usefulness is his back air, which is his quickest move. This move is so great due to Mario's amazing airspeed, and allows him to create a wall of back airs for edge guards. His best aerial by far is his up air, which is a bicycle kick and helps Mario again with his combos. Despite not having the fire flower, Mario's fireball comes out quickly, is affected by gravity, and bounces along the ground until it hits an opponent or runs out of steam. This does menial knockback, but gives Mario a good approaching option to run behind. His side special is his cape, Mario's most interesting and unique move. This cape, stemming from Super Mario World, has the ability to reflect projectiles, stall Mario in the air, and turn opponents around. His up B, the super jump punch, to emulate Mario's jumping in his games, gives Mario rising height with a hitbox on his fist. This can be used for both recovering and ending combos. Finally, his down B is Flood from Super Mario Sunshine, and after charging up, gives a wind box pushing the opponent off the stage with wind, or water. Mario is able to use his combos and quick movements to kill the opponents with flashy, stylish, and strong combos. The second character to be introduced into the Smash Bros series is Donkey Kong. 
first appearing in the game Donkey Kong as the antagonist against Mario. DK now has his own series of games where he is the protagonist, known as Donkey Kong Country. This series hosts six mainline games. The first trilogy involves DK and his friends platforming through his homeland to stop King K. Rule from stealing his banana horde. This trend continues with the two Donkey Kong Country Return games in terms of style, but with a Black Sheep 3D Donkey Kong 64 in between. These games boast an incredible flow of their movement, to which DK swings, rolls, and runs around the stage, which is carried over into Smash as well. He is one of the heaviest fighters in the game, but despite that, his speed is high to match his game. He is a big-bodied character, and has moves that fall into his heavy archetype with slow and powerful moves serving as his bread and butter. Donkey Kong, aside from his moveset, has an interesting and unique mechanic to his game, his cargo throw. After a grab, DK can forward through the opponent, hoisting them over his back and allowing DK to walk or jump with them, to throw them to get combos, stage spikes, or gimp the opponent, so that they cannot recover. This is a callback to DK's ability to pick up items in his game, and works really well with his character in Smash, so watch out for DK's grab at all costs. For his moveset, we'll begin with the special moves. His neutral B is the Giant Punch. This move, showcased in one of the best scenes in the Subspace Emissary, has DK charging up a punch and swinging his arms around, turning angry when it is fully charged. Once released, DK punches with super armor, creating an extremely strong move that kills at super low percents. The side B, Headbutt, involves DK burying his opponent into the ground with his head. Here he can set up for a combo with tilts or a finishing blow with his punch. This is the first of DK's four spikes, the most on any character in the game, if done in the air. The next move is his spinning Kong, his up B, where he spins around like a helicopter, an interesting concept for a move. In the air, it is a bad vertical recovery, but an amazing horizontal one, with a decent hitbox. On the stage though, this move transforms into a killing machine with tons of super armor. His final special is his hand slap down B, where DK, as the name suggests, slaps the ground and creates damaging shockwaves. If this is used in the air, it becomes DK's second spike. For his normals, there where DK gets his identity of a heavy character with strong moves, but also a few super quick moves and weaker ones to give him combos along with his strong moves. His jab is a one-two punch, which is quite useless, but his three tilts all involve swinging his hand either up, forward, or down, which actually has a chance of tripping. His smash attacks all share a similar sentiment in contrast to the quick and weaker tilts. These moves are slow and strong, and have DK either clapping his hands or punching the ground to get good range and strong attacks. His final grounded normal is his dash attack, an amazing reference to his games. This roll can be used to set up into combos or be an amazing ground covering option with the distance that it covers. His aerials are another great part to his kit. In terms of usefulness, let's start with the forward air, his third spike. Here, DK will swing his arms in front of him to make the slowest but strongest of his aerials. Next in usefulness is his down air, which is the fourth and final spike for DK, a simple single-footed kick downward that will surely kill the opponent at high percents. His neutral air comes next with its ability to stay out for a long time. His best two aerials, which are really useful, are his up and back air. His up air takes second, which has DK swinging his head in the air and can be used for his infamous ding-dong combos. Finally, his back air is one of the quickest and strongest back airs in the game, and works wonders for DK. Using this move is similar to Mario's back air, with a lot more range, and it creates a wall of hitboxes which can be used to keep out the opponent with his one-footed kick. Overall, Donkey Kong is a character who is big and heavy, but has some uniquely quick moves to use in his combos, as he also has the continued threat of a grab. As the third character introduced into the Smash Bros series, Link boasts an arsenal of projectiles that help him align himself and his playstyle with that of his home series. Link comes from the Legend of Zelda franchise, which is a series that takes place in Hyrule, where Link and Zelda work to stop the incarnation of evil, Ganon, from taking over. In these games, Link uses his array of weapons such as the Master Sword, arrows, boomerangs, bombs, and more, in order to traverse through the semi-open world and complete dungeons to reach Ganon and defeat him. While Link is not the most agile in his games, his use of ranged weapons and throwable objects to fight off beasts throughout the land was a style implemented into his play in Smash. He is not the fastest character and doesn't have the fastest moves, but Link's ability to be a hybrid between a zoner and a sortie allows him to bait and punish opponents effectively. 
He's quite strong with the Master Sword, aligning with his games, but needs to use his other tools to not get walled out during a match. He does have an interesting mechanic with his shield, where he can block incoming projectiles to the front while standing, walking, or crouching. The first tool that allows him to rack up some damage is the Master Sword, which he uses for most of his moves. This begins with his jab, which is a triple sword swipe, and has good range and power with most of his moves, but he's slow startup speed. On the other hand, his dash attack is the embodiment of these slow moves that Link has. With a jumping start, Link thrusts his sword out and downward, giving one of the strongest dash attacks in the game, but incredibly slowly. For an added bonus, Link is able to jump over some smaller projectiles in the air as a sort of dodge and hit combo. This trend continues with his three tilts, which are all laggy, but powerful. His four tilt is almost the same move as his dash attack, but Link stays stationary during the attack instead of moving forward. His up tilt is different in that it is a upward sword swing and can be used for comboing at low percents. His final tilt, the downward one, is a simple floor sweep with his sword, popping the opponent up for a follow-up. As for his smash attacks, this is where Link's true power is shown in his moves. One of the strongest forward smash in the game is Link's F smash, a two-part move that has a damaging and knockback section. In fact, if this move is used at zero, it actually shoots out a blue beam from the sword, just like in his home series, for added damage. His up smash is a three-part swing over his head, which is high damage but a slow startup. Finally, his down smash has a similar slow but strong concept to the other two moves, where he swings his sword on the floor on either side of him to cover landings or rolls, where it is unknown where the opponent will be relative to Link. His aerials also shine as a way to punish his opponent as they react to his specials. In the order of utility, Link's back air begins the list, but it is not a bad move. It is the one aerial in Link's kit where he is not able to kill, as it is two wimpy kicks behind him, but it can help start combos as it is a multi-hitting move. Next is his down air, which is Link thrusting the sword below him in order to spike the opponent, or even bounce off their heads if and hit them again. His up air is next, which is essentially an upward version of Link's down air, animation-wise. It's long and strong, and gives Link a thin yet solid vertical comboing and juggling tool. Second best, his forward air, is used especially in bait and traps with his two powerful swings, and it is used to kill or even drag down the opponents for a grounded punch. But by far his best aerial is his neutral air, which has Link kicking the opponent. This move is so versatile as it can kill, combo, jab lock, clank with anything, and it's really, really quick. Link would not be Link, however, without his projectiles. Link's neutral B is his bow and arrow, where he winds it up and sends his arrow across the stage as a slower zoning tool, which can be charged. This move can also be picked up and restrung or thrown. His boomerang is next and is an amazing tool in Link's kit with its ability to fly out and return. This move is great for baiting out an opponent to jump and allowing Link to punish the other options as the boomerang returns. This move can be smashed or tilted and put in many different angles for so many different mix-ups. His up B is the only non-projectile special, which is the iconic spin attack. This has Link spinning around with his sword for some damage. In the air, it goes decently far and is a multi-hitting move, but on the ground, it is used for an out-of-shield option that hits once. His final move is his down B, the remote bomb. This blue bomb can be pulled, thrown, and then activated by Link whenever, as long as it is not in someone's hand. This move, the best move in his kit, can be used for combos, trapping, edge guarding, ledge trapping, and so many more aspects as it is such a versatile move. Overall, Link is a character that plays his game with a plethora of projectiles that lead into his powerful sword attacks to catch opponents. Samus was the fourth addition to the Smash Bros series, and she brought an entirely new primary archetype along with her. Coming from the Metroid series, Samus uses a lot of projectiles from her power suit in order to explore the depths of the planet as a bounty hunter performing missions previously thought impossible. These games involve her using a variety of weapons, missiles, beams, and bombs in her armor to explore both 2D and 3D games. Design elements from both of these styles of Metroid games made their way into Samus' moves. This mainly starts with her special moves, which will be discussed first in Samus' case. Her best move is her iconic charge shot, her neutral B. This move is one of the strongest projectiles in the entire game, and is the center point of her kit. She can combo, trap, and most importantly, kill with this projectile, as she looks for time to charge it and use it. Her next special is her side B, her iconic missiles. These explosives come in two different variations for different purposes. 
smash the stick in order to get a super missile, colored green, which will fly quickly at her opponents, but slightly tilt the stick to get a regular missile, which moves slower, but homes in on the opponent. Another great way to overwhelm with projectiles. Her up B, Screw Attack, is her only non-projectile special, just like Link, and has her curling into a ball and spinning while moving upward, like in her home series. While this is useful as a recovery tool, it is also a great escape from shield or pressure options that can kill at higher percentages. Her last B is her down special, which drops a small bomb. It is not very strong, but can be used extremely well for ledge trapping, and it has a good recovery as it gives her horizontal momentum. On to Samus' normals. Beginning with her jab, Samus uses a 1-2 punch into gun-swing combo, which is not actually a true combo, surprisingly. Samus' dash attack can cause her to use her shine spark, as she shoulder bashes her opponent to kill, and increase their percentage. Her tilts start with her up tilt, an outstretched heel kick, which is good range, but is pretty slow to start up. It does not spike aerial opponents, but can do so with grounded opponents to set up for combos above Samus. Her four tilt is a standard kick out in front of her that is used to push opponents back, and allows Samus to get into good range to use her projectiles again. Down tilt finally uses her arm cannon's purpose in a normal move, as she fires a shot into the ground and emits off a puff of flame in front of her. As expected for someone who is a zoner character, Samus' smash attacks are not the greatest. Her up smash shoots little puffs of fire above her into an arc to catch opponents, but watch out for its inability to connect properly. Her down smash is a leg sweep on both sides of Samus that can send at a really bad angle, but it is not that powerful. Her forward smash is probably the most lacking of the bunch, as it uses her arm cannon to push out a flame, which is not too strong and quite underwhelming. Finally, we are onto her aerials. Continuing with the trend, these will come in the order of viability in her kit. The first of these is a neutral air. This was a tough decision, as Samus does have some pretty good aerials, but neutral air had to be the worst with its double kick. It is strong and can be used for combos, but does not utilize all of Samus's range with her height. Second to worst is her down air, which is an arm cannon swinging downward and spiking the opponent. In the middle of the pack is her up air, which is an amazing move that has Samus doing an upward drill kick that hits multiple times and can juggle or even kill. Her back air is an extremely good killing tool that actually uses her full length of Samus's leg with a backwards kick. Finally, her forward air, which is an aerial version of her up smash, covers so much range and is a great option at the ledge if it is not predicted. Samus' playstyle is a mixture of her projectile, grounded, and up-close aerial game that keeps the opponent guessing until they get smacked by a charge shot at 70 and KO'd. The fifth character to be introduced into the Smash Bros. series is Yoshi, from both the Mario and Yoshi series. His first appearance was in the 1990 Super Mario World as a companion for Mario to ride on and eat enemies in his way. From then on, Yoshi has continued in that role, but also got more recognition in his own series, in which Yoshi takes the lead and does the platforming in order to save Yoshi's island from either Baby Bowser, Bowser Jr., or Kamek. Here, Yoshi traverses through his island to stop the bad guy team using his flutter jump and ability to eat and throw his enemies in the form of eggs. This adds another aspect to the typical platformer genre and makes Yoshi's games a bit unique. This translates to his characteristics in Smash, where he is most notable for his airspeed, which makes him an aerial combo-oriented character. This makes his aerials the best part of his game, so they will be started with. The worst of the bunch is going to be his forward air, which is still a great move, but since it is a little slower with his headbutt, it is ranked the lowest overall. Next will be his down air, which is a flutter kick, with Yoshi running on the opponent, dealing up to 40% and killing off the top. Next will be Yoshi's back air. This move involves Yoshi performing three backward tail swings. It is great for shield poking, and can also be Yoshi's way of dragging opponents to the ground to continue for combos with tilts or smash attacks to kill them. Second best is his up air, which has Yoshi snapping his tail above him, and can be used in conjunction with his double dump to perform pure vertical combos to kill. His best aerial, however, is his neutral air, as it is a quick out of shield option and killing tool. Yoshi simply kicks his foot out in front of him, but in a pinch, it is a really amazing option. As for his tilts, Yoshi primarily uses his tail here in order to begin his combos into his amazing aerials. This clearly can be seen with his forward tilt, which uses his tail in a forward and curled up motion to pop the opponent into the air. His up tilt has a similar concept, but uses a purely upward swing above Yoshi. Finally, his down tilt has Yoshi crouching as he spins around and whacks with his tail. His jab is a useful get off me tool where Yoshi does a double kick to push the opponent backwards and out of his face. For his dash attacks, Yoshi runs and lunges while kicking forward. While it is a useful move, 
it is mostly because of its ability to cross up the opponent and keep them guessing. Yoshi's smash attacks are the other main method that Yoshi uses to get kills, alongside his aerials. His up smash is a great anti-air tool, which has him doing a bicycle kick overhead, and is his most useful smash attack. His forward smash rears his head back, and then pushes forwards with a headbutt, but it is quite a laggy move. Finally, his down smash is a double-sided tail snap that can be used for unknown landing sides. His special moves are a mixed bag, with some amazing and some really underwhelming moves. His neutral B is Egg Light, which has him sticking out his tongue and eating the opponent. Not for a grab, but to put the opponent in an egg on the other side of him. This move is a command grab, so it cannot be shielded, and allows Yoshi to follow up and get good damage on the character while they're in the egg. His worst special is his Egg Roll Side B, where Yoshi hops into his egg and rolls around on the floor, not doing too much damage or knockback, with tons of end lag. His up B is his only projectile in his kit, the Egg Throw, where Yoshi throws his egg in front of him like in his game. This can be angled in many different directions, and also has the ability to bounce off the ground. Yoshi does stall his momentum and gain a little bit of height for this move, but it is the first up B in the series that is not a recovery primarily. His down B is the Yoshi Bomb, where Yoshi rises up and plummets downwards, hitting anyone on the way. Yoshi does have little stars on the ground to protect him while landing from hard punishment as well. Alongside all these moves, Yoshi does have two unique mechanics, being his double jump super armor and an unpokable egg shield to also use. Yoshi in the Smash Bros series uses his aerial movement and quick snappy moves in order to outmaneuver the opponent, get in good position, and take stocks. As the sixth character introduced into the Smash Bros series, Kirby is the first one who was actually created by the creator of Smash himself, Masahiro Sakurai. Kirby comes from the Kirby series, which was a series of 2D platformers until the most recent 3D Kirby in the Forgotten Land, in which Kirby flies around the universe to save his home planet Popstar with the help of his friends. His first appearance was in 1992 in Kirby's Dreamland for the Game Boy. In these games, Kirby has the unique ability to fly around forever and the even more unique ability of using copy abilities. If he eats an enemy, he can take their powers, and this gives him a lot of versatility in movesets. This series, with these mechanics, is very entertaining to new players, and that was carried over into his moveset and playstyle in Smash Bros. In Smash Ultimate, Kirby is one of the lightest characters in the game. He's about middle of the cast in terms of run speed, and fairly slow in terms of his air speed. His most unique special, however, and some may call it a mechanic, is his inhale, his neutral special. In this position, he can swallow any other fighter in the game and steal their neutral B, enhancing its power. This is an interesting mechanic since it gives Kirby a lot of versatility in his moveset depending on who he is fighting. In addition, he is able to spit the opponent back out as stars, and can eat projectiles either to heal or spit them back out too. For his side special, he wields a hammer. With this, he can charge it up to perform a massive fiery attack, or just use it regularly without a charge. Either way, this move is quite slow and does not have a lot of use in a fast-paced match. However, he does get some super armor with the fully charged version. The final cutter is his up B, and it's Kirby using a sword and launching himself up and then downward to spike the opponent. When he hits the ground, a sword beam comes out and acts as a projectile to protect Kirby during his landing. This, along with his six jumps, gives him a good recovery. His last special is his down B, Stone, where Kirby transforms into a stone and drops, like a literal rock, to the ground with complete super armor and invincibility. While certainly less interesting than his specials, Kirby's normals definitely define his character. His jab is a simple rapid jab combo, coming from his fighting ability in his home series. His dash attack is another move that comes from his home series. In this move, Kirby turns into a ball of fire and pushes himself along the ground, hitting any opponent in his way. Due to his short and stubby limbs, Kirby has quick kicks for his tilts, but all three of these can be used to start or end combos, and are great neutral tools up close. First is his up tilt, which is a kick above Kirby's head, and can be hit into itself multiple times, and even into aerials for good damage. His down tilt is a similar idea, but is a grounded, quick leg sweep. This move also has a chance of tripping, and allows for Kirby to get greater follow-up combos when his opponent stumbled over. It also has Kirby crouching, which smushes him down a lot, making it easy for him to dodge attacks while performing this move. His forward tilt is not very useful for comboing, but becomes a decent killing move at higher percentages with Kirby's kick in front of him. For his smash attacks, they all use his feet as well. His up smash is a bicycle kick overhead, his forward smash is a frontward kick, 
and his down smash is a spinning sidekick on both sides of him. These three moves are fairly simple and are used to kill the opponent. For his aerials, again, in terms of usefulness, the worst is his neutral air, but this was a really tough decision since all of his aerials are quite useful to his kit. Here Kirby faces the camera and performs an aerial cartwheel, hitting on all sides of his body. This move is a killing sweet spot and a comboing sour spot for great versatility. His forward air is next, with a triple kick in front of Kirby. This fair is useful for comboing out of a throw and even off stage as it throws out a large hitbox in front of Kirby for edge guarding. His back air is third, since this drop kick behind the pink puffball is pretty much solely used for killing, but it is pretty strong in doing so. His down air ranks next and uses Kirby's great aerial stalling ability to his advantage, as this multi hit drills opponents to set up for combos on stage and spikes off stage. Finally, his up air is his best aerial which is an overhead aerial kick that can be used for comboing primarily in his moveset. Overall, Kirby and Smash tries to use his best aerial coverage and copy abilities to combo and edgeguard characters. Fox was the seventh character added to the Smash Bros. series, and is one of the most well-known due to his dominance all throughout the five Smash games. Coming from his home series of Star Fox, which debuted in 1993 with the original game of the series name, Fox pilots his R-Wing spaceship to help save the Lilat system from any dangers. The gameplay is almost all third-person shooter, where the player is controlled the R-Wing and is able to fly it around the stage on a set track to shoot enemies down with different weapons the ship has. While it is hard to represent Fox in Smash properly since he is rarely actually controlled or seen in the game, the developers of Smash did a great job of making a fast, lightweight, and brutal combo machine that will get anyone hyped to watch. This begins with a jab which is a double punch into a flurry of kicks in front of him, resulting in a rapid jab. It's not a super strong move, but an extremely quick one that is used for simple ground punishes and jab lock setups. Fox's dash attack is nothing special in the animation department, but it gets the job done. He runs forwards and does a kicking motion, which can be used as a combo starter and a burst option due to his quick speed. The simple moves that Fox is given continues on with his tilts. His up tilt has him putting his hand on the ground and using his foot to kick above him. This move is very quick and also used for comboing a lot, hence the trend. It will not kill the opponents, but that is only since comboing is its primary use. His four tilt is the classic scene four tilt in many characters already discussed so far. Fox does a roundhound kick in front of him to use as a spacing tool to get the opponents back to stop pressuring him. Again, not a strong move, but a fast one. Finally, his down tilt is not a kick, but rather a tail sweep along the ground. This is an amazing combo starter, and its angle is perfect for popping opponents up in the air and being able to follow up with stronger attacks and aerials. Fox's primary method of killing his opponents and taking stocks are his smash attacks, which can be comboed into by aerials and tilts. The most useful of these is his up smash, a bicycle kick overhead. This move can be comboed into by Nair or other moves due to his extremely fast startup on frame 8. His forward smash is another kick, but this time in front of him, as he flips overhead to do so. This is his slowest smash attack, and therefore probably the least used, but still, compared to other character smash attacks, it is extremely fast. This is also very useful after jab lock setups. His down smash is a splits kick, where Fox will hit on both sides of him with his legs. After performing some drag down combos, Fox can use this move to cover both sides of him and hit with a brutal angle that will not allow some characters to recover. For his aerials, this is where his moveset shines, but his least useful move is his forward air which is a rapid quintuple kick in front of him, which takes a while to perform, but can be used for drag down setups, so it still has a pretty major use. Next, it gets tough, but I would have to go with his down air, which is a drill kick, not used for spiking, but rather for comboing. In the middle of the pack is his back air, where Fox performs a backwards kick, which is his best killing move in the air. His up air is second, where Fox does a backflip, hitting with his tail, and then with his foot afterwards. While this move is thin, it's actually a very good juggling tool, his best aerial is his Nair, which is a flying kick, and is very quick and useful for comboing and for killing. His specials are where Fox gets some spice in his moveset, starting with his neutral B blaster. Fox pulls out his blaster and fires pink lasers across the screen, which do zero knockback, and fire very quickly, leading to some good damage racking up over time. His side B is Fox Illusion, where Fox moves forwards quickly in a blue blur, and if it connects, can either launch the opponent slightly up, or spike the opponents with a weak hit. The up B is Firefox, where Fox engulfs himself in flame and bursts upwards. This move does have some startup, but is used as his primary recovery tool. His final move, 
and probably most well known, is the Down B, Shine, or Reflector. This move is a useful reflector but has the ability to stall in the air and hit opponents to do some damage, called a Shine Spike off stage. Overall, Fox is a quick character who uses his normals to rack up damage and kill with long, strong combos. The eighth character introduced into Smash was Pikachu, the flagship character of the Pokemon franchise. Pikachu's first games were Pokemon Red and Green in 1996. The objective of these games was to capture and train as many Pokemon around the land as possible, and use them to battle other trainers to become the best in the region, and also to help take down evil organizations as a side mission. This RPG is difficult to relate into Smash, because there were so many moves with the names only and very few animations, but the team did an excellent job of portraying Pikachu as the electric rat Pokemon. His specials are where the moves he uses in his home series are seen the most. His neutral B is Thunder Jolt, where Pikachu shoots out a small ball of electricity that travels along the ground of the stage while making short hops. Pikachu is able to use this to play neutral as well as an approaching tool to run behind. It is in contention for one of the best projectiles in the entire game. His side B is a little less useful, but it is a Skull Bash move from Pokemon. Pikachu charges up while the side and B buttons are pressed and then he releases and launches himself forward horizontally, hitting any opponent in his way. This move is not so useful on the stage, but it is a lot more useful as a recovery, as it covers great distance. His up B, and primary recovery, is Quick Attack, where Pikachu takes two bursts in a direction chosen by the player. This move has two parts, in which it must go in different directions, so Pikachu cannot go up twice in a row. If it hits an opponent, Pikachu does a little bit of electric shock damage to them, which helps him in his recovery. His final special is his down B, Thunder. Pikachu creates a cloud in the sky and a lightning bolt comes out of it and strikes downward. If his move hits Pikachu, it creates a massive electric shock around him that is extremely strong and is a great killing option. If the opponent is hit by the move as it comes out of the cloud, they will be spiked pretty strongly. Pikachu's aerials also have some references to his moves in Pokemon, beginning with the worst of his, his down air. This move, called the Electric Screw, is where Pikachu spins his head downward and plummets with electricity, spiking the opponent when hit by the sweet spot. If done on the ground, the landing hitbox can also be potent and long-lasting. Next is his Up Air, which is still an amazing move for combos, as Pikachu snaps his tail upward, and while not that strong, can actually string into other moves very well. His forward air is next, where he performs a multi-hit while spinning around with electricity in front of him. It is a useful combo, drag down, and also damaging tool. Pikachu's neutral air is next, where he shocks electricity around himself and is the second best of his aerials. This move is primarily used for dragging down for combos to rack up tons of damage, in a combo known as lightning loops. Finally, his back air is where he spreads out his body and spins, making another multi-hit in the air. Seeing as with all the multi-hit aerials, drag down combos are essential to Pikachu's game plan. Onto his grounded normals, his jab is a bit funky and was one of the strangest seen in the entire video. It is where Pikachu headbutts the opponent with a single jab over and over again, but without a finisher on the jab. His dash attack is a similar movement, but while he is running, and he headbutts his opponent for a far stronger killing move. Pikachu's tilts are also great, such as his up tilt, where he swings his tail overhead, his forward tilt, a lightning kick in front of him, and his down tilt, a tail swipe. All three of these moves are essential to Pikachu's game plan to be the quick and starting move to a combo. His smash attacks are useful for kills from drag down setups. First, there's his up smash, an overhead tail swing that covers the air above him. His forward smash has Pikachu charge up and release an electric ball in front of him, his most powerful smash attack. Finally, his down smash is where he charges up with electricity and spins on the ground with a multi-hitting move that sends it at a really bad angle for opponents, also used at the end of combos. Overall, Pikachu is a character who relies on his drag downs and combos to really rack up damage, killing with a strong electrically charged smash attack or edge guard. As the ninth character introduced into Smash, Luigi was the first to originate from the same series as another character in Smash, his brother Mario. While his first appearance in a video game was in Super Mario Bros., he was merely a complete clone of Mario. His first unique appearance, however, was in Super Mario Bros. 2, where he differed from Mario with a higher jump and slippery movement. He then got his own series, while continuing to remain a key player of the standard Mario series. In the Luigi's Mansion series, Luigi uses his poltergeist to fight off ghosts in mansions and hotels and save his brother Mario. Luigi's character in Smash is a mixture of some of his characteristics seen in the Super Mario Bros. series and his own series. This begins with a higher double jump, lower traction, and similar weight to Mario. 
His jab, just like his brother's, is a 1-2-3 attack, but the third attack is a butt bump instead of a kick. It is used just like Mario's as a get-off-me tool due to his short range in his moveset overall. Luigi's dash attack is where he gets some uniqueness, as he runs forward, flailing his arms in front of him, doing a multi-hit of damage and is one of the funniest dash attacks in the game. It can be used to cross up and even kill at certain percentages. Luigi's tilts have similar idea to Mario's, but again, with a little weird quirk either in the animation or use of the move. The forward tilt is a small kick in front of him, which can also be used as a better get-off-me tool. The up tilt has a similar animation to Mario's, but is a better combo starter at higher percents than his brother's. His down tilt is a crouch tilt that will push the opponent back and is great on the ledge as a poking tool underneath the stage. His smash attacks are also pretty similar to Mario's. His forward smash is the only animation-wise different one, where he slices his hand in front of him to spear the opponents. It is used as a classic standard killing F smash, but is really strong and does pretty decent shield damage. The up smash is a headbutt upwards like Mario's, and is useful for anti-airing due to its invincibility head hurt box. The down smash is also a breakdancing move that hits on both sides. His aerials start to get some separation from his brother, and it begins with the worst one, his forward air, where he swipes his hand in front of him quickly. This is not a very strong move, but it is used heavily for combos. Next is his down air, which is a spike from Luigi spinning his legs. This is useful off stage and in his zero to death combos, but not particularly in the neutral, due to its niche use and small hitbox for spiking. In the middle is his neutral air, which is a standard kicking move that most other characters have. It is a fast one, and it is used for comboing or crossing up shields, like most others. The up air is next, and is a bicycle kick overhead, but is not necessarily used for vertical combos, but more horizontal ones due to its strange knockback angle. The best of Luigi's aerials, however, is his back air, which is a drop kick that has decent range due to his longer legs and a good quick killing and edge guarding tool. Luigi's special moves are some of the coolest in the game, and really show off his funky style. To start, however, is his neutral B, his green fireball, which is similar to Mario's. For differences, this move travels unaffected by gravity straight along while spinning in place. It can be used the same as Mario's, but it can cover horizontal area in front of the screen with pressure as it moves, so it is a bit different than the red plumbers. His side B is the green missile. Here, Luigi charges up and launches himself forward like a missile. This is able to do decent damage and knockback, and can be used as a recovery tool to aid in Luigi's otherwise poor horizontal recovery. The fun of this move comes in the luck aspect, where it has a 1 in 10 chance to misfire, and Luigi travels much farther, faster, and with tons of knockback, becoming a really early kill move. If the misfire hits the stage though, Luigi will get his head stuck and will become very vulnerable to spikes, so be careful. One of Luigi's primary killing options is the up B, his super jump punch, but unlike Mario's version, this sends straight upwards and is a single hit, but is extremely strong as he punches upward with strong momentum. This is the finisher to his zero to death. In the air, it is notably weaker, but it's still a strong killing option nonetheless. Finally, his last move is his down B, the Luigi Cyclone, where Luigi spins around, creating a tornado that sucks the opponents into the hitbox, hitting them with a multi-hit, and then firing them back out. This move is invincible for the first few frames, so it's a good landing tool with the win box to catch unsuspecting opponents. In total, Luigi's game plan is taken a bit from Mario's, but has a different take on it, with his uniqueness which makes him different to play while giving him different but deadly combos. Ness was the 10th character introduced into the Super Smash Bros. series. Originating from his only game, Earthbound, in 1994, Ness battles with his friends using his PSI power to take down the evil Gygus and save the world. His game is an RPG, where Ness and his party use items, magic, and melee attacks to defeat all sorts of wacky enemies. Similar to Pokemon, since it is difficult to map an RPG into a fighting game, Sakurai and the devs did the best job they could to convert his and his party's moves into Smash, and try to make Ness as fleshed out as possible. These begins with Ness's specials, as they are the magical moves that all have a reference to his own game. The first of these is PK Flash, which is actually a move that Ness knows in Earthbound. Ness controls a green charge in a semi-set parabolic path, which when released, explodes, doing a significant amount of damage and knockback. In a full speed match, it is quite hard to connect this move with an opponent, but when it connects, it packs a punch. The longer this move is held, the stronger it becomes. The next move is his infamous side B, PK Fire. This shoots out a lightning bolt looking projectile, and when it connects with the ground or an opponent, it will ignite into a pillar of fire, and stays in the field until it runs out. If it connects, it does a lot of hits and keeps the opponent in place for combos. In the air, 
this move sends at a downward diagonal, so it is great as an approach stopper. Nessus BK Thunder is his upbeat. He sends out a Thunderbolt, which can be controlled. Ness does a circle the bolt around himself and run it into him, which will send Ness flying towards the ledge. This move also has an active hitbox, which is extremely powerful and can kill very easily if the move connects with Ness. The down B is his PSI Magnet, which is primarily an absorber around himself to heal if he takes in an energy projectile. This also has a small hitbox for the opponent, which can be used for really cool combos. For his normals, Ness's jab is a jab-jab-kick combo that is used for the same thing that the typical jabs have been used for. His dash attack is the first move with this magical effect, which is a triple hit in front of Ness, which can actually kill the opponent. Ness's tilts are mostly combo moves, which are quick despite their short range, and begin with his up tilt. Ness pushes magic above his head and can hit multiple times in a row in order to set up for some other aerial combos. Ness's down tilt is his fastest move, since he can spam this to lock or rack up damage extremely quickly around the ledge. His final tilt, his forward tilt, which is another kick in front of Ness, this time is not a get off me tool, but is surprisingly more used as a killing move that works really well. His smash attacks are some of his melee moves from his home game, such as the bat and the yo-yo. The forward smash uses the bat and is a simple swing that is not only really strong, but can reflect projectiles. The yo-yo is an up smash, which is a simple swing overhead, but it also has a hitbox on the ground as it charges. This is way more potent than his down smash, which is a walk the dog movement in front of him and behind him with the yo-yo. Here, Ness is able to hang the yo-yo over the ledge while it is charging, and can gimp opponents, or at least two-frame them that way. For his aerials, we will be continuing with the worst to best ranking. This means that his down air is the worst, with a magical kick below to spike opponents. Fourth in line is his forward air, where Ness pushes magic out in front of him with a triple hit, which is very useful for combos and edgeguarding due to its long-lasting nature, along with Ness's really high double jump. Next is the back air, which is a backward drop kick with magic, of course, and is a primary killing tool for the child. Ness's nair is amazing due to its speed, as Ness spins around with his hands out and magic coming to do some damage. This is a great get off me tool in the air. Finally, the last and best aerial is Ness's up air, which is where Ness moves his finger above him and creates a magical multi hit, which is great for combos. Overall, Ness is a character that uses his funky movements and great camping and projectiles to outmaneuver and overwhelm the opponents to take stocks early with surprisingly fast combos. Considered the most hyped character in Smash, Captain Falcon was the 11th character added to the series. He comes from the F Zero series which is actually a high-speed racing game in which Captain Falcon is able to drive around on his Blue Falcon race car against other characters from his universe. Like Fox, Captain Falcon himself is never controlled in the original game, but unlike Fox, Falcon is never controlled outside of the car at all in his whole series. Therefore, when making the Captain in Smash, the developers totally had to make of a moveset for the character and relied on his fast-paced speed to overwhelm the opponents, just like he does in his game. That being said, Captain Falcon is the second fastest character in the game only behind Sonic, and this carries over to his moveset. His jab is another typical one-two punch, followed by a knee kick for the gentleman's hit, or a flurry of punches for the rapid jab version. Interestingly, Falcon's jab can actually use the gentleman version to kill near the ledge on some stages. His dash attack uses the speed of his dash to allow Falcon to shoulder block the opponent like a football player, and have a killing move as well. Falcon's tilts are quite varied, with his up tilt being an overhead heel strike downward. This move has the ability to spike the opponents and is actually quite strong to boot. It is not really useful in the neutral for combos due to its slow speed, but is great at catching the opponents jumping from the ledge or recovering high to put them right back down. Next, his is forward tilt, where he does a roundhouse kick in front of him that can be used to push opponents back as a poking tool in the neutral. The down tilt has the captain swinging his leg out in front of him and kicking on the ground, which sends characters at a brutal angle for characters with a bad recovery. Falcon smash attacks are a strong point in his game and are quite useful for catching the opponents with a read due to those high pressure, causing them to make a single mistake. The first of these is forward smash, colloquially known as the people's elbow. This move is the slowest and least useful of the three smash attacks, where Falcon winds up to release his fiery elbow. His up smash is a double kick upward, which sadly has the ability to make people fall out. However, its hitbox is quite large and can hit unsuspecting opponents. The down smash is one of my personal least favorite moves in the game, which can be really good for catching landings, but maybe that's just against me. This move has him kicking in the front and then back and can also send at a dirty angle giving an edge guarding opportunity. Falcon's least useful aerial is his back air, but it is a really close call since all of his aerials are amazing. 
he pumps out his fist behind him and really only ranks the lowest due to its short range. Sadly, next is his down air, the stomp, which is his signature spike, a double-footed kick downward that is really strong. In the middle is his forward air, the most famous of his moves, known as the knee of justice. This is an extremely strong knee to the opponent, which does around 22% and kills really early. His up air is next, which is another overhead bicycle kick used for combos. Finally, the best of his aerial moves is his neutral air, which is a double kick in front of him that is primarily used for combos in neutral and edge guarding. While his normals are the star of the show, Captain Falcon does have some iconic specials to go along with them. First of all, the most well-known move in Smash is the Falcon Punch, his neutral B. He winds up for an extremely long time and lets out a fiery punch that kills really early and does tons of knockback. The issue is that it was too slow and will rarely be hit to help with this lack of mobility a little bit. His side B, his Raptor Boost, involves the character lunging forward while performing a flaming uppercut, which has super armor to help it get through other attacks. In the air, it has the ability to spike the opponent, but if it does not connect, Falcon will suffer into freefall. His up B is the Falcon Dive, where he reaches up in the air, moves forwards, and can command grab the opponent if close enough. The last move is the down B, Falcon Kick, where he kicks and moves downwards with a flame. In the air, this moves at a diagonal downward angle, and on the ground, it moves completely horizontally. In total, Captain Falcon is a character who relies on his quick movement and fast speed to overwhelm the opponent and get some hype kills from a crazy combo. As the 12th and final character introduced in the Smash 64, Jigglypuff was originally seen as the joke character of the roster. She is the second character to be introduced from a series already represented by a Smash Brothers character, along with Mario and Luigi, but Puffs is with Pikachu. As stated before with the 8th character, Jigglypuff's home series is Pokemon, an RPG that has little animation, so it is tough to give Jig's animations for her attacks, but the team did a good job in the specials department. This begins with her neutral B, Rollout. Jigglypuff charges up while spinning around and rolling until she sends herself forward and rolls along the ground until she either hits the opponent or runs out of momentum. This move is not the best due to its slow startup and ending, but it does have some movement control since it can be turned around. The side B is Pound where Jigglypuff slaps her hand in front of her and snaps the opponent upward. This halts her horizontal momentum, but does an insane amount of shield damage to keep the opponent in check. The up B is the other up B in the game, along with Yoshi's, which does not help as a recovery for its primary purpose. This unique move has Jigglypuff singing, hence the name Sing for the move, and puts her opponent to sleep. This can set up for a smash attack, a combo, or the down B, Rest. Puff's most iconic move is her Rest, which is where she falls asleep, but as she does so, she has a tiny hitbox, which does an immense amount of damage and knockback. The downside of this move is the crazy 180 frame cooldown for over 3 seconds. This is the move that her gameplay is tuned to, but is a very polarizing move. Along with her rest, the most influential part of Jigglypuff's character is her movement. Since she is one of the lightest characters in the game, she can be killed really early, but she does have 6 jumps in total, which allows her to float in the air and use her crazy airspeed to help her in her recovery or for neutral. Therefore, her aerials are much better than the rest of her kit, so we will begin with those. The worst of these is her down air, which is a drill kick downward, but it does not have the ability to spike her opponent. It is still very useful though for comboing to rest and edge guarding since it lasts for a really long time. The fourth will be her up air, which is an overhead hand swipe. This is a little stubby move due to the small size of her arms, but it is the only move that hits above her in the air. Her neutral air takes the middle spot, which is a single-footed kick in front of her that lasts for a long time to be used for edge guarding. Her forward air is also another footed kick, but where she kicks out both of her feet in front of her as the primary tool for offstage play. The best move in her kit, and the best aerial since it is so long-ranged, hits hard, and can edge guard easily is her back air. The only issue with this move is that she gets turned around after using it once in the air, so she must get around that, but there is some new tech to get around this issue. Her grounded moves start to become a little worse, and they begin with her jab, which is a two-hit combo with her nubby hands. The dash attack is a surprisingly good killing move, where she headbutts into the ground, and is one of her only good grounded options. Her tilts are not great, since she is really stubby in all three fronts. Her up tilt is a kick above her, her forward tilt is a roundhouse kick in front of her, and her down tilt is a grounded kick in front of her. All three of these moves are practically useless due to their shocking lag and small range, feeding into one of Jigglypuff's primary problems. Her smash attacks are somewhat useful for Puff, such as her up smash, which is a headbutt above her. This move does not have special properties and is not the strongest, but is a decent ground killing option. Her down smash is a spinning splits kick and covers both sides of her. 
Finally, rounding out all the moves for this video is her forward smash, which is a kick and the strongest of these killing moves. Jigglypuff's unique aerial movement and polarizing gameplay due to her edge guarding and yet lightweight forces her to play such an interesting style of smash, which heavily relies on her aerials such as back air and rest. These have been all the original 12 Smash Bros characters explained. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video and the idea that was submitted. If you guys want more videos where you choose the topic, let me know, but for now, go and ask questions in the community post tab for the AMA. Thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing, and commenting, and remember, let's go Highlanders.